And this is First Maccabees 1 and verse 11. In those days went out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Double honesty, apostles and elders of Ray Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. We call this lesson, The Ordinances of the Heathen. Revelation 13 and 16. That's the full title, because we're not letting up. We know what's happening. We know what your stupid little meetings, what you're talking about. Who are we speaking to? It's the Edomite, the white man. We know that it's you who is in rulership. You have the earth's resources. It's been given into your hand for temporary charge, as it says in Job, in, uh, Job 9 and 24. So we know who you are. <coughs> and our power, his name is Yahweh, his only begotten son. It's Yahweh Shai. That's our high priest, mediator in the heaven. It's our savior, redeemer. That's our champion right there. And we're not going to stop saying his name, his father's name. You're daring to call us Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, the dispersed, the diaspora. It's the children of Israel. That's who we are. That is our biblical nationality. And you want to call yourself the white man. Well, we know who you are in the scriptures. You're the Edomite, the devil that the Bible speaks of. And this device, let's, let's read this device that you're coming with, Revelation 13 and 16, and he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive this high-tech, under-the-skin, subdermal device in their right hand or in their forehead. That's what you're coming with. And we know what your little meetings are all about, how to implement it, how to get this you know, chaos, to have people lining up, everyone seeing visions and dreams even myself I don't normally have dreams as we say here we're, we're done to any sense i'm seeing body bags and all kind of terrible things in my in my vision in my when you close your eyes you just know what's what's going on it's in the earth the truth is here so let's get straight into it because the hour of temptation is really on the horizon <clears throat> And I've mentioned this before, I'm going to keep mentioning the marketing. We can just expect it to step up. We know the Edomite playbook, wheeling out all of these so-called celebrities, uh, actors, politicians, musicians, act, everybody, whoever they're supposed to be, all liars, as a matter of fact. That's what the word acting means. You're a hypocrite, a liar. You're going to wheel them all out. We know the deal by now. So let's get back into the scriptures here. Joshua. We're going to be featuring uh, Maccabees for obvious reasons. Because these things just keep going round and round in a circle. But let's go Joshua 24 and 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the floods, these were all idol worshippers, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord whose name is Yahweh, and we worship him through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. So we say, Yahweh, Bahashem, in the name of Yahweh Shai. See, that's what we're dealing with. And the people said, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Soon they said that they went back, should say we went back on our word. We are those people. First Maccabees 1. Let's go from 9. And after his death, this is uh, Alexander. You'd have to read to get into the history of this. But we're going to cover some of this in this chapter here after his death they all put crowns upon themselves so did their sons after their many years and evils was multiplied in the earth and there came out of them a wicked root antiochus surnamed epiphanes son of antiochus the king who had been in hostage 
and hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. These are Edomites, the so-called white man, the devil that the Bible repeatedly speaks of in those days when out there went out of Israel. Wicked men who persuaded many. That's what we're speaking about, the marketing. Who do you think they're going to put up front to try to get the Hebrew Israelites to take this device? Watch saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device, what device? The device of this Edomite, a white man. He's a liar and deceiver. It's his progenitor that was in the Garden of Eden. This perpetual hatred and envy of the children of the Most High. This device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license. Something like a 501c3 or in whatever country you get. You can just start these churches where I'm speaking to you from in Jamaica. If people have uh, churches in their front yards. Everywhere you look, there's a church. You can just set up, you can collect money, you don't pay anything. Who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. This is one of his ordinances here. We just read in Revelation 13 and 16. That's what he's got to come with. It's written he has to do it. Verse 14. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. This was exercising in the naked. That's what gym, gymnast means. You exercise naked. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So you see, the desperate nature of our people to join on to these heathen. Where are we going to go to next? So we see where this device it pleased them. I think it was going to jump further forward here in Maccabees. Let's go to 24. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre and spoken very proudly. Therefore, there was great mourning in Israel in every place where they were, so that the princes and elders mourned. The virgins and young men were made feeble, and the beauty of women was changed. Every bridegroom took up lamentation, and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness. Let's jump. Where are we going to jump? Okay. The land was also moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. And after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute as taxes unto the cities of Judah, who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude. And what did he do? He spake peaceable words unto them. So that's what we're getting ready to see. As a matter of fact, they've already started it. Don't worry, this device, it's just got your health records. You can open your car, you can use the gym, you go to the bar, go to the restaurants, go to the shop. But there's all these wonderful things you can do. What, what's, what are you talking about? It's got nothing to do with any, uh, nothing to do with what's in, in your, your Bible. You've even got the so-called ministers in the truth who are repeating this mantra, similar to when the the portion uh, that we've just gone through. All these ministers amazingly stood up in these churches, head of all of these, whether it's Jehovah Witness, a, a Baptist, a, whatever, seven day, and they all stood up and repeated what this man had told them. We trust the science. We trust the science. They had a playbook, and this is what is going to happen here. Spake peaceably words, unpeaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. And when he had taken the spoils of the city, what did he do? He set it on fire. It's no wonder some people are thinking that this man who's currently the king of Babylon, he could be this man. This is Antiochus we're speaking about. And pulled down the houses and walls on every side. 
Where am I? I lost my place here. So this is the wickedness of these people. It's non-stop. We're going to come back to that in a moment because I want to say something about this innocent blood that this man, he loves it. He can't get enough blood. So Psalms 94. Psalms 94, 20 and 21. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee which frameth mischief by law? He set up his law. He's got everything in place to push forward with his deceit. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. That's Jacob. And condemn the innocent blood. Can't get enough of it. Proverbs 1. Verse 11. If they say come with us. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without a cause. Proverbs 6. 17, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Just want to make a point here about this man. He loves the blood of the innocent. And who, which innocent are we speaking about? It's the Hebrew Israelites. They're calling us Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Isaiah 59 Let's go from six. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. This is multiple sins, by the way. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. They can't be, understand what they can't do anything that is good. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. So all those of us who have joined themselves unto this wicked man. You've got something coming to you. There is a payback for him and for you. You can't say the name. You can't give the correct breakdown of this scripture. What do you think is going to happen to you if you keep repeating those lies? Back to Maccabees 1. Let's go now from 36. Let's pick a view here. For it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary and an evil adversary as against us the name. That's what Satan means. Adverse. What's he adverse to? He's adverse to righteousness. He hates the Heavenly Father. He hates his son. He hates the prophets, the angels, the children of the Most High. He hates all of it. He's a liar. He's just going around with our book as pretense. He judges every matter. He puts his hand, he swears on the Bible, then he throws it to one side and judges all matters out of his own book. He just wants you to believe the lies, but he knows it's foolishness. Verse 37, thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it. Let's jump to 40. As had been her glory, so was her dishonor increased. So her honor, dis so was her dishonor increased. And her excellency was turned into mourning. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. See, we see this Repeated with, uh, with, with Nimrod. And here we have it now again. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented. The Israelites contended to his religion. And sacrificed unto idols. What do we think this device is? Remember what we're speaking about. The ordinances of the heathen. And profane the Sabbath, for the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols, and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised. See, all aspects 
of the Lord's statutes and commandments, he wants that done away with and follow his way. That's what this ordinance is all about. That's what Revelation 13, 16 is all about. We want you to stop this worship. We want to put out of your mind once and for all. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So if you take it, that's what you're doing. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, who's an Edomite, a white man, so you understand, he said he should die. See? to understand who you're dealing with here so many people just can't get into their mind that you have an adversary and who is what's the identity of this adversary you can't grasp it you're blocked from it romans 15 and 4 for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we should through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope things are repeated over and over equals yes these one start at nine the thing that hath been it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun this all happened before is there anything whereof it may be said see this is new it hath been already of old time which was before there is no remembrance of former things neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Let's turn a page here, where are we? Ecclesiastes 3. 14 to 17. I know that whatsoever the Most High doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And the Most High doeth it, that men should fear before him. But they don't. The Edomites don't fear the Most High. They're doing what they're doing. They say, I am the Most High. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and the Most High requireth that which is past. That's why they want to run from who they are, a fugitive and a vagabond. That's who they are. They're desperately trying to hide their identity. Please call me something else. I don't want to be an Edomite. No, no, it's not me. All these people are dead. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there where's that that's the earth i said in my heart the most high shall judge the righteous and the wicked for there is a time there is for every purpose and for every work ecclesiastes 4 and 16 in case you think that everybody is all disappeared and there's no where to answer for your crimes verse 16 there is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. There's no escape. You have to face up for what you've done. Ezekiel 35, let's read the first few verses here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. This is the, the white man. This is the devil, the Edomite, this man with the, the leper skin, the, the spirit of Satan inside of him. Try to understand this and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Yahweh, power, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay, see, there's a price to pay, there's no escape. I will lay thy city's waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of, of the blood of innocent blood of children. Start that again. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, 
and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord God, Yahweh power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Seeth thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. There's a price to pay for putting your leprous hands on the Most High's people. You can't escape whether you're in the guise of Antiochus, Nimrod, or Cain in the garden, or Pharaoh, or Herod, or whoever king was at the time. There's no escaping once you put your hands on the children of the Most High, the apple of his eye. You made a big mistake, Joel 3. Let's go from 15. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake but the Lord will be the hope of who? Of his people and the strength of the children of Israel so you understand. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, Yahweh power dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom, that's that land where these people dwell, America, Babylon the Great, shall be a desolate wilderness. Why? For the violence against the children of Judah. Because they have shed innocent blood in their land. How many hundreds of millions of people of all the tribes? That's the 12 tribes. How many have you slaughtered? There's so much blood across the whole of Babylon the Great and all the islands of which I'm speaking to you from. You've shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cause their blood that I have not cleansed. I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Blessed be the Lord. Barakatai Hawa. Barakatai Hawa Shai. All praises to our power. Yahawa. Bahashem. Yahawa Shai. There's no escape for the wickedness against the children of Israel. And this device. We can't wait for you to make it mandatory. Push it. Do it. So you've been listening to the ordinances of the heathen. Revelation 13 verse 16. Shalom until the next one.